Good morning, friends. Uh, welcome back to our channel. And if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe to stay up to date on our videos. Today, I will be discussing um, some facts, some facts about spina bifida. There's some weird light there um, because it's Spina Bifida Awareness Month, and so I will be talking a little bit about the different types of spina bifida. Um, like, I don't want to call them side effects, kind of about them and how individuals might be affected. Uh, but I more so will be going into detail about my, my specific and Danny's specific um, level of spina bifida and just discussing sort of how it affects and doesn't affect our life. Um, so let's get started. I figured since I'm at it today, I might as well do also a day in my life. So just came back from Costco, got a couple items that I needed, and uh, I shouldn't say I did. My mom was gracious enough to buy them for me. And now I'm just about to get some lunch ready. I'm going to be doing some turkey, potatoes, and some vegetables. So, slowly getting it started. It's a little early, but I'm hungry, so. <laughs> so, there are four types of spina bifida, which is occulta, closed neural tube birth defects, meningocil, and the last one is myelomeningocil. Um, but to quickly back up, spina bifida means split spine. So in most of the cases, you are born, an individual will be born with their spinal column, their spinal sac, and all of that loveliness protruding from their back. And so when they're born, they need to have a surgery to close it all up and sometimes put back the spine into the body, in a way. Um, the least severe is occulta, which means that one or more of the vertebrae uh, was malformed, and so you, most of the time you won't notice any difference with how they walk, how they act, any of that, and sometimes, not sometimes, usually they don't have any symptoms of pain or um, needing surgery. That's one of the cases where you might not find out you have occulta until you're 50 or older and it's just because it is so mild that you can't tell. It might come in the form of a back pain or, you know, some, some form of pain that the doctors can't figure out and then they go down the line and all of a sudden it's, oh, you have spine bifida occulta. Um, then uh, closed neural tube birth defects and meningocil are in the middle. Again, those have varying symptoms, degrees. Each individual is going to be different in how it affects them. And the most severe, which is myelomeningocil, which both Danny and I do have. Um, even though we have the pretty much the same level I'm drawing a blank on what level Danny is, so I apologize. But we are fairly close on the same levels. I'm L5S1, and um, growing up, we both had the same, pretty similar stories with when we learned to walk, uh, how we learned to walk, and aids that we used to walk. Um, we both wore AFOs uh, when we were in that time of learning how to walk and gain independence. I personally stopped using AFOs in middle school to elementary school and that was just my choice. I, I knew that I could work myself and get that strength in the legs that I needed and I did. So that's I think where a lot of our fitness comes from is we want to keep that strength. We don't want to lose what we have right now in our legs and we want to gain any amount of strength possible. Whatever we can achieve, we want to. Uh, my, my biggest thing is I don't want to heavily rely on walking sticks, walking aids, 
if I don't have to, I have them. I, I do use walking sticks right now because it helps my hip not hurt. But if I don't have to use them, that is my ultimate goal. And so that is why we continue our fitness as much as we can. Spina bifida affects 1,500 children a year, and with spina bifida, most, not most of the time, I would say a quarter of the time, you also will be born with hydrocephalus. While they are not always connected, they are linked in some fashion, and so most medical professionals, when they see a diagnosis of spina bifida, they will check right away for hydrocephalus. They will check to see if there is water on the brain, and if so, they will make preparations for a shunt, a VP vent ventricle. I'm drawing a blank on what it stands for, I really apologize. But they, they install a VP shunt to help circulate the brain and then drains through your stomach. Um, both Danny and I do have that as well, and we both had it installed, not installed, but, you know, put in at birth, and neither of us have had ours replaced, not on wood, but we won't have to. Um, we are very fortunate in that case to never have had ours replaced. Um, many times the, it malfunctions for whatever reason, and you have to go in year after year and get it replaced. I've known a couple young children and adults who have had theirs replaced numerous times and just thinking about that surgery is scary because that's almost like a, not almost, it is, it's like a brain surgery and if I don't have to go through that I really don't want to. So we'll see how that goes. Um, also, 68% of individuals born with spine bifida are also allergic to latex. In my case, I have never actually had a diagnosis of being allergic to latex. I've never had a reaction or anything like that. So I do stay away from it, like in gloves, paint. You know, if I can stay away from it, I do. I personally haven't figured out any correlation with latex to certain foods. I know bananas, I think it's kiwi. There's a couple different foods where it, they said that there was some traces of latex and, or not traces of latex, but if you had a latex allergy, you'd have problems with these food groups. And I've been having those food items and I so far haven't had any issues, but I'd rather stay on the safe side and steer clear of what I can, you know, not use. Um, but back to our cases of myelomeningocele. So, I walk unassisted, and I again, like I said, I, I do not use braces or anything like that. I just use the walking stick, and Danny has AFOs up to his knee, knee level-ish, as well as he uses walking sticks, or swords as I like to call them, <laughs> um, but he uses that, and um, he also has a platform on his shoe to help elevate it and because his hip is cut, you know, his hip is off and one leg is shorter. So the platform on the shoe helps elevate it and helps him with his walking. But regardless, we are not our diagnosis. Nobody is your diagnosis. You can still thrive having spina bifida. It is not a death sentence. It's, it's not nothing horrible. Um, you are what you make of it, I guess. And we both just choose to live our life to the fullest, however we can, every day. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been an interesting experience so far with the spina bifida, because uh, you don't know, some days you can be perfect, and other days you can wake up and not be able to move. It's just, that's kind of how the pain is, and that's the one thing I'm kind of, that's why I hate winter, I guess, is because the cold irritates my body and makes it harder for me to move. I'm really stiff, and 
itself. Living in Wisconsin hasn't been the greatest in that regards to the winter, but we deal with it, right? So tonight I'm gonna to be taking you along when I cook my dinner. We are making chicken and rice. So let's get started. and windows are all clean now. I can see through them. Ooh. I also I also had to show you the cute little decorations my mom brought me. They came over yesterday. There's a little scarecrow. My plants are really taken off, thankfully. Got another scarecrow over here. And then I got a jack-o'-lantern to light up tonight. I'll show you once I have all the lights off. It's kind of hard to see when it's so bright, but it's fall weather season here and Halloween, even though it's gonna look different this year. I got the race going. Well, I'm about to turn it on. It's not on yet, but the rice, olive oil. Gone. 60 minutes. Now on to the chicken. Got my chicken all ready. Ah, as it comes off. <laughs> now we're gonna put it in the oven. Yummy, yummy. Here's a better angle. So this is going in the chicken, or going in the chicken. It's going in the oven. Lemon Zafron Chicken. Oven all preheated. And I'm gonna heat up some vegetables. I already got them in there. Let's see how much time is left on the rice. Almost 10 minutes. Woohoo. This is what I was marinating the chicken in overnight. Doesn't look that appetizing, but it tastes yummy. Hey friends, so I am just, I just got back from a dentist appointment and now I am waiting for my second shift, third, third shift of the day. So I worked two hours tonight and yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready for bed. I've been up since, I think I got up at 5.45. I don't know why, but my brain was like, yeah, you're gonna be up right now. <laughs> so yes, needless to say, I'm tired. But uh, I am just enjoying the nice weather. Got the windows down. Well, 
most of the way down, I guess. I gotta turn it on so it's all the way down. I gotta show you. Blech. I want to show you the nice weather I'm looking at. So it's so beautiful. The sun is finally out. Just outside. My nice little sticker that I gotta get replaced. yeah we're just we're hanging out I have a full hour big gust of wind just came <laughs> one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about or ask because I wasn't sure so when I go when I go to the dentist I have to take meds and I forgot the name of the med right now but um, I take four meds four of these pills an hour before I go to the dentist and it's because of the equipment that they use and because of my shunt um, they don't want it to like counteract the shunt and then cause a lot of issues that we wouldn't be able to solve right at the dentist office um, so I really hate taking meds because I don't swallow pills it's embarrassing as a 30 year old I can't swallow pills but my throat just was like yeah you're not gonna swallow pills so good luck um but yeah so I just got back from the dentist got some nice clean teeth they hurt but eh, they're clean <laughs> um, but yeah it's just it's been a it's been a relaxing day working surprisingly it's been one of my days where I'm not as uh, not on my feet as much, which has been nice. My back has been acting up, and um, since I've been using my oh, I can't reach it. Since I've been using the walking stick, I haven't had as much hip pain, which has been really nice. Um, so I use that now when I walk inside buildings or just around. It helps alleviate some of the pressure that I get on my hip. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you at dinner time. Talk to you soon.